another day of Reykjavik Open has ended. Today was another double round, round five and six. And what a day it was. Let me talk you through the rounds. Because those two games that I played today, they were something else. Let me tell you that. So let's take a look at round five. In round five, I faced Zach Kensdale from England. And um, yeah, I was really excited to uh, face him. Um, on till I saw that he plays a Karakan, another opponent, another Karakan, and uh, yeah, everyone plays a Karakan these days, I don't know what it is, but I have to uh, come up with new uh, lines every single time. So yeah, indeed I started with e4, c6, d4, d5, and once again the fantasy variation. I am almost done with all the other lines, maybe I'll come back to them, you know, you never know. But for now, I'll, I try the fantasy variation again because the first time was pretty successful. So e6 uh, was played by my opponent and what's actually really funny is that for this specific game, since it was very early, uh, I did not have much time to prepare and I simply went over the lines what I prepared uh, for, for the first round where I also played the fantasy variation but um, I was thinking to myself hmm I don't really remember what to play against e6 on this move but I was like ah, I'll be fine and then basically the next morning I was like not really in time to check anything it was uh, I was running out of time um, so I was like yeah it should be fine I, I I don't think it will happen I think some other move will happen and then he plays e6 and I'm like yeah and I, you know, like I know a few moves, but you don't really know uh, what you're doing after that. So I play knight c3, bishop b4, and bishop f4, and this is all I remember. <laughs> this is all I remember, and I, I remember so well how I was looking at the file, how I was looking at the lines, and I was like, what is the bishop doing on f4? Because this looks a lot like the French defense, right? We basically went from Karakan to French defense, sort of. Uh, but usually in the French defense, white goes e5, f4, if we go to sort of advanced type of variation uh, lines. I don't know, it, it just looked so strange to me. But for some reason, bishop f4 is one of the main moves and that's all I remember. So yeah, I thought I'll, I'll wing it. Knight e7, and here I'm just simply unsure what to do. How do I develop my pieces? Where do my pieces go? Because of course, bishop d3 is not a move because then d takes e4, and I'm going to lose a pawn on d4 for no reason. And I was pretty sure that that was not supposed to be the case, so I can't play bishop d3. Well, if I can't play bishop d3, where is the bishop going then? I'm not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I went knight e2, simply because I have to develop the knight anyway. Knight g6, bishop g3, b6, and um, yeah, I, I just don't know where my pieces go. I don't know what to do. And as it turns out, I'm really supposed to play this one move, h4. In the next couple of moves, the computer gives h4 every single time, which is insane. In this position, I really didn't want to play h4 yet because it felt too early. And after h5, my pawn on h4 is permanently weakened. And I wasn't really sure how to proceed from here. I guess you just take it easy and develop the pieces very slowly. But I didn't like including h4 just yet. It felt way too early. So anyway, I went a3, bishop e7, and here, even here, I'm like, I mean, especially here, of course, h4 makes no sense at all to me, it's just a free pawn. But apparently it's completely fine, as white will simply continue developing, and this rook will have, you know, control of the h-file, can be really useful at some point. So I guess that is the reason why h4 is so good, but it just feels very unnatural, right? So e5 is what I played, I thought let's just switch to some French kind of advanced variation uh, line. I don't know. It looks horrendous though, because look at my development. This is not really where you want to put your pieces. Also this bishop on g3 in the French with white. Um, yeah, it looks quite ugly, honestly. So short castle anyway, queen d2, bishop a6. Um, and here I went for knight d1, because I am simply unable to see what I'm supposed to do. Where do my pieces go? I have absolutely no idea. So, yeah, anyway, um, I want to get my knight to e3, maybe c3 to defend my pawn on d4, f4 maybe, I don't know, we'll have to see, but at least I want to get my knight out of uh, here and towards 
going towards the king's side, maybe to attack. We'll have to see. c5, c3, of course, knight c6. And I really didn't like that this knight is heading to the light squares. b3, c4, they're so weak. So I play b4 because I want to stop knight a5, of course. Um, the downside is that I'm really pushing a lot here. And after c takes, c takes, bishop c4, a really strong move played by my opponent. Um, I was partially hoping that this was not going to happen, uh, simply because, well, bishop c4 is just blocking everything. It's just there, it's a super strong piece, and it really limits uh, me a lot here. And the idea of black is simple. You want to play b5, a5, and start attacking on the queen side. And this pawn on b4 is really, really weak. Um, even though it's defended by two pieces, look how many attackers appear all of a sudden once the pawn reaches a5 over here, right? So yeah, with the development I have here, I don't know if you can call this development, it's quite sad over here. I'm not really sure um, how to handle this, right? Um, I was calculating this one line, what if f6? Because this is a very appealing move, right? Because, yeah, you attack the center like this very often in the French. Uh, but I was uh, really happy to uh, see knight f4. And it opened up a lot of doors for tricks and all that stuff. Uh, because let's say knight takes f4, you just take the bishop over here. And you have the pair of bishops. And that bishop was getting really annoying at, uh, at that point. Um, the issue is after bishop takes f1, you have this intermediate move knight takes e6. So that's a fork and... Yeah, white ends up winning material, and um, yeah, that is simply the problem. e6 is hanging as well as a6, and it's just too much. And um, even if you manage to save everything, let's say, I don't know, some move like bishop c8, I just take on g6, and the black pawn structure over here is not the greatest, and the king may feel re really unsafe. So you gotta be careful here, and that's why I was sort of hoping for f6, but my opponent played the right move, bishop c4, and now I had to turn into desperation mode. I don't know what to do anymore. It's a really difficult position for me. And I thought I have to put everything, um, all the sort of like logical moves aside. Um, I have to start playing practical, practical chess. And h4 was sort of a really desperate way to try to provoke my opponent into taking it and then I can start an attack maybe along the h file because my rook is still here and it's sort of trying to distract my opponent from um, yeah focusing on the queen side to going towards the king side because that's where I want the play to be right because there's not much going on for me on the queen side so my opponent with the bishop and I think this is the moment where things started to fall apart because I was thinking that knight takes h4 was much more accurate because after takes, takes, I have a hard time playing g3, my pieces are really really bad over here and um, this bishop is a monster. Once it goes back to e7, the threats remain, the attack on the b4 pawn remains and I don't really have an attack going on over here. But then if you look at the position of what happened in the game, after the bishop trade, now all of a sudden that dark sword bishop is gone and my bishop is actually, you know, um, also gone. But it was a one piece that I was really struggling with, right? It was not doing anything on g3. It was just stuck there. It had nothing to do there. So I was really happy with this trade and I thought, okay, like, I'm smelling some chances here. Um, until this point, I was really concerned about my position. But now I start to get more confident. And uh, just to quickly update about the time... Um, uh, for both of us, I was on 47 minutes and my opponent on 28 minutes, so I was feeling pretty confident that I also had more time on the clock, and um, I thought that this was really the point that things started to turn around. So I played king f2, uh, delayed bone cloud, I guess, um, because I wanted to defend my poor pawns over here, because if I push g4, then of course my pawn on f3 is hanging, so I don't really want to allow this. Rook 8 is what my opponent played. Uh, knight e3, I'm just coming in with the knights, knight g6, knight g4, and I'm just bringing my knights into the game. And this is the final uh, mistake that my opponent made, the knight to f8, which makes perfect sense, right? Because you want to retreat the knight to cover h7, because that feels like the target. But in reality, black was completely fine. 
Apparently, black had to uh, focus on the queen side still with b5, queen b6, and this pawn on d4 is super weak. I thought during the game that I was going to be fine, but now looking at it, I see the issues because it's really difficult to defend, to defend this pawn. Because let's say I'm just going to make some random moves, rook c1, queen b6, and it's really hard already to defend this pawn because it's already being threatened. Black can just take the knight on the next move. And if I try to defend the pawn with king e3, you can just, let's say, take on e5 and the pawn on d5, d4 is pinned. So, yeah, white's position is simply falling apart here. So, um, instead of playing knight f8, my opponent really had to focus on the queen side with b5 and continue the attack there. But I managed to distract my opponent um, with my attack. My opponent plays knight f8, and this is where things start to fall apart completely. Knight e7, knight h5, and my knights are just simply infiltrating into black's position. And here I play the brilliant move knight gf6. I want to keep my knight on h5, so that, let's say, I don't know, something happens, knight takes, queen takes, and I play g4. Uh, g4 immediately was much better, um, but yeah, just to illustrate that I want to move that pawn up to g4, and the knight was, of course, in the way. So g takes f6, knight takes f6, king h8, queen g5. And here I'm simply checkmating. Knight g7, queen h6, and checkmate is simply unstoppable. Well, unless you give up the queen, but that's uh, still losing. So knight f5, and my opponent actually allowed me to deliver checkmate. With queen takes h7, another brilliant move, knight takes h7, and rook takes h7, checkmate. I was really happy that my opponent allowed this because oftentimes people already resign, and um, then it's such a pity that oh, I couldn't have, I wasn't able to do this move to deliver the checkmate on the board, but it's always really pleasant uh, when you're able to do this, and um, yeah, it's always, of course, really enjoyable when you're already in the winning position, right? So uh, yeah, it was really nice to be able to um, finish it like this. I was really lucky though. I had a really bad opening, but I guess we take those. My opponent tried his best, but um, yeah, the attack was too overwhelming. And this is, you know, kind of also um, what is very thematic when it comes to uh, when there's a stronger player. Um, the stronger player is in a worse position. They often try to complicate things and to kind of um, yeah, lure the opponent into making mistake, And that's exactly what I was trying to do here. I was trying to get my opponent to make mistakes, and um, it worked out. So, uh, yeah, it was a really nice game. All right. Then we have to talk about the next game.